That's where I met my father. I was in the class. I actually thought I was going to COC to learn to be a pilot. But I ended up in a class, a media production class. And I tell you, when I first walked in there, I said, you know what? I went home that day, I told my mother, I said, I might be in this class about two days, and I'm out. I'm going to play some basketball. I'm not going back because I had the teacher from, he was something to deal with. I mean, my first job in that class, I was a gopher. I had to put tape on the floor, and the tape had to be put down perfect, or else you get shouted, you might get thrown out the class or whatever. And I couldn't figure it out. I said, why is, it this, why, why is this man so hard on me? Couldn't figure it out for nothing. So I said, you know, I stuck it out. And I ended up, when I graduated, I finished that, that class, media production. I had, no, I had no plans of going to college because there was no one around me trying to encourage me, hey, look, you need to go to school. Just play basketball, make you some money. All this. So I said, hey, I'm going to play basketball. I'm good. Make some money. To heck with school. But every time I thought about, man, well, do I want to go to college? I always thought about Dr. Rainey. I said, this man's going to find me if I don't enroll in somebody college. And, if, and that right there, it was good for me in a lot of different ways because there was someone in my life that cared whether or not I succeeded in life. And there was somebody that saw something in me that I didn't see in myself at the time. So I went on. I rolled in college, played basketball, had my little fun, the whole nine yards. So, you know, I'm getting ready for the NBA. I'm running around playing in all kind of NBA summer leagues. You know, I had already set in my mind until I went to L.A. once. They had they have this uh, event called the NBA Summer Pro League. When I walked in the gym, I was number 100, I'm sorry, 1,000 and probably 9 or 10. That's how many Leroy McMath there were in that particular gym trying to make, trying to have a, a professional career. And I was smart enough to figure out it was nothing but a scam. You pay your money, you go there, they say you can try for a team. I said, no, this is not for me. So I came back. I went to work for my father, went to school. I worked there for about a year. I don't know if he fired me. Or if the, if the money ran out the program, I don't know what happened, but either way, I ended up leaving the program. I think it was because I was wearing a jerry curl. <laughs> and I used to always put this jerry curl juice all over the cameras and all over. So he was like, look, son, you're going to have to cut that stuff off of your head. So, but in, in any case, I left there and I met a gentleman that I was working with part-time for the city of Saginaw. His name was Ray Starr. He's walking around looking like Prince and Morris Day. You know, I mean, we worked all week. He spent his whole check on his head. So I was like, he asked me one day, he said, Leroy, I want you to be my manager. I said, okay. What's the manager's job? He said, you do whatever I ask you to do. I said, no problem. <laughs> So I ended up being his manager. He became a local hit. And from that experience right there, it taught me that you can, you can do or be anything you want to be in this world, not in America, in the world. There's people in other countries dying to get over here to get what we have. Are you all aware of that? Oh, OK. Just want to check. Make sure I'm in the right place. So from that. I got a taste of the little entertainment industry, and it just, it was so easy. I started my own record label. First, the first group I had was my little sisters called the Schoolgirls. I put a record out on them. They became a local hit. My sisters got on my nerves, so I dropped them. Had to move on. Then I met another group, the BAD band. They got on my nerves, got rid of them, moved on. I met this artist by the name of MC Breed. You guys familiar with MC Breed? Ain't no future in your front. Well, I'm the proud parent of that project. That became the number one record, rap record in the United States. We won all kind of awards and everything. And that was so good, I kept doing it. A few years later, 
I ran into this guy. He was the strangest thing I ever met, but he was a very good producer. And we did this record called The Dip. Are you familiar with The Dip? I put my hand, who can do The Dip in here? Who in here can do The Dip? We're going to see when I get through. Now, I'm doing a little contest. The best school in the United States. I'm going to have a little something for you. Ah, we'll get to that. But in any case, after I produced the hit, Freak Nasty the Dip, we won all kind of awards uh, on TV, MTV, a lot of other things. And I moved from there and I started doing movies. I worked with the movie Booty Call with Jamie Foxx and yeah, I take it, I did it. Eight Mile, did you all see Eight Mile, Eminem? Okay, that's a Michigan guy, give it up for Eight Mile. Come on now. And now, today, through all of those things that I've been doing my, throughout my life, and the reason I felt that my story was important to you guys is because when you think back, when I first enrolled in COC, I was put there because they knew I was going to fail anyway. So I made a mission in my life to be the best that I could be. I surround myself with good people at all times, and I learn. I read a lot. <clears throat> I read in libraries, read books. I read. Anything I do, I read about it. Right now, I'm a developer also when I have time. I build houses, buildings. I knew nothing about that, but I started reading. I'm actually going back to school next semester so that I can get better in that. You always have to have something. You have to have a backup plan. How many athletes do we have in here? Athletes cheerleaders, basketball players, baseball players. Okay, okay, that's great, all that's good. But you need yourself a backup plan. How many of you in here going to college when you graduate? Every hand in this building should be raised except for the teachers. How many of you in here dream? Do we have any dreamers in the building? Okay. Do you know how much it costs to dream? It costs a lot. That's okay, you will, keep dreaming. But I'm saying that to say this. All of the things that I've done in my life, the accomplishment, the achievements, is because I work hard, I believe in myself, and I always have people around me that believe in me. But because we're humans, we're not perfect. And because you're not perfect, you have to be very careful about who you associate with. The people you hang with, the places you go, you have to be very careful. Because you can get yourself in trouble without trying to get in trouble. You know that? You should. And I'm going to tell you, I want to share something with you all. Because I like to keep it real. Okay? They wanted me, my wife told me, she said, Leroy, write something down and talk to them. After I met with you all principals and the staff last night at dinner, oh, I need your attention for one moment, okay? I met with your staff, and I met with everyone involved with the GEAR program. I couldn't write anything. I didn't want to read anything I wrote. Because you all need to give a hand to your staff here. and your parents because I had the opportunity to have dinner with with the staff with representative Jones I had no idea what to expect I had never met any of them before in my life we had one of the greatest dinners I've had in a long time and the people here at your school they care a lot about what you do when you leave this school I picked that up last night I would have paid an arm and a leg to have people in my life like that when I was in school, which I had a couple. And it's very important. You have to love your school, love the people that's trying to help you. Because you can get, you can get mixed up with the wrong crowd just as quick as you walk out this door today. <laughs>